I am Beck and welcome to a video where I decide to read my entire to be read pile by the end of July this year. Wish me luck. For some context, in the past couple of years I've had over 200 unread books on my TBR or my to be read pile and I've since reduced that amount from 200 to under 20 which has been a massive undertaking. I've got a video here and there of all of my tips and reading vlogs and how I try and go through this process but as a result of that process now I have four physical TBR books, I've got one audiobook that I own and I've also got like four ebooks. So I want to catalogue the fact that I've got all these things and I want to read them before the end of July hits. Will there be a penalty if I don't read all of these by the end of July? I'm actually not sure, probably not, because if I start reading one of these books and I don't like it, I just DNF it or did not finish it. I put it down and I go, I'm not reading this anymore. So that will be my penalty, I guess getting rid of it, but if I intended to get rid of it anyway, it's not really a penalty. So I'm not going to punish myself. It's not like my to be read pile is going to explode in a certain amount of time. Like I don't need to unhaul the lot of them. I just need to make myself aware of what I've got, what I need to read and the time span I need to do it in. Otherwise I'm just going to have stuff sitting around for a long time and I don't want that to happen. So here's what I've got to read. City of Blades by Robert Jackson Bennett, which is the sequel to City of Stairs. This is roughly 500 or so pages long with a smaller font so it is intimidating to me but hopefully I can finish this fantasy sci-fi blend because I love this genre. If I Never Met You which is a fake dating romance I think this is going to be a fun time and I'm looking forward to reading it when maybe the weather is a little bit warmer but we're going into winter so maybe also as a palette cleanser between a few other series that I'm going to be reading that are quite dense fantasy books. This might help. The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab or V.E. Victoria Schwab. This is the sequel to the Shades of Magic trilogy and I've been meaning to read this for a while now, since Christmas at least. After filming my recap everything was fresh in my mind and I'm trying to grasp at straws that are left in my brain like okay those are the things that happened to the old characters, now let's jump in and read about the new ones. I hope I like her writing style but I said in another video I need to start it and then I'll know. So will I keep it? Will I get rid of it? Future Beck or near future Beck? We'll know. Next I've got another physical book but it also goes hand in hand with an audiobook. So that is Crucible of Chaos by Sebastian de Castell which follows Estebar. I think he is either part of the cohort of the Greatcoats which is related to the quartet written by Sebastian de Castell. I actually have started this already which I'm proud of but I don't know enough about it yet to say whether he is directly related to the Greatcoats or he's just involved with them. So leading straight on from this book is Play of Shadows which I have on audiobook, I got it on Audible and I'm really hoping that because it's a direct sequel I end up liking this enough to continue. I love the audiobooks because Joe Jameson does a fantastic job so I'm really looking forward to finishing this finally. It's only 300 pages, I don't think it would take me too long. For a fantasy that's actually pretty short. The fact that I haven't had a Sebastian de Castell book in you know, a year and a half to two years and now all of a sudden there's two of them. I'm like, okay, clearly the man has been writing up a storm. So this one and then Play of Shadows, hopefully I enjoy both of them. I've also got Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett, which I've got City of Blades by him and then maybe City of Miracles, but I don't own that yet. So I can't really count it, but his books are great and I'm really enjoying his writing style and how the humor is subtle. I'm enjoying Foundry Side. I have read you know, this much of it so far. I just really want to make sure I stay on track and motivated so that I finish it because I tend to just get distracted after work, especially. I get home from work, I clean my house, I have my dinner, I have my shower, and then I'm like, okay, it's bedtime now. Or I scroll Instagram for 30 minutes. Those 30 minutes, I need to read like 20 pages instead. And eventually I'll get through things because changing a habit like that, it's hard when you're tired, but I'm going to try and make myself stick to it, especially until the end of July. I'm gonna try and see how much I can squeeze in by then. I've got so much hope for myself. And then on ebook, I've got Dragonfall, which I don't really know too much about, except that a friend of mine tried to read it and didn't love it. And I'm like, oh, is this one of the ones that I'm going to try and then just DNF? <laughs> so that's potentially a DNF in my near future. I've got another book called The Dragons of Deepwood Fen. 
another dragon book. Aside from the pretty cover and the fact that it seems like an epic fantasy with a rebellion and a heist and people escaping on dragonback, I don't know too much more than that and I'm more than happy to try a book based on that kind of concept and premise. So I've got that on ebook. I've also got The Will of the Many by James Islington and that's a Roman inspired epic high fantasy which I'm very much looking forward to. I've heard his writing style has gotten better and after not liking his previous work I think I'll like this one. And then in addition to that I've got a cozy fantasy book called The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Feels like everyone has read this book except me. I've mostly been avoiding it because the retail copy is like 40 Australian dollars which is ridiculous so I got it on my Kindle and I'm looking forward to trying it out. When hopefully the weather gets a little bit colder I'll be looking forward to this cozy fantasy and actually I also have more audiobooks that I own that I feel like I should include in this video, but I'm not including it in the challenge. So I've got The House Witch 2 and 3, which are additionally cozy fantasy books. And I plan to read them around October or so because of the, the witchness to them. I'm like, oh, those will be Halloween vibes for sure. So I do have those, but I'm not including them in my challenge until July. So as far as books that I own, those are all of my audiobooks, ebooks and physical books. I did say I had four physical books when I started this video and on my shelf there's clearly five. So apparently I am great at counting, but I also have some books on Libby as well. So depending on when their holds come in, I might listen to them in tandem with the stuff that I am already currently reading. And one of those books is Binti, which is a very short sci-fi. I think it's like three or four hours long. Some other fantasy books that I've got are The Final Strife, which I've had on my Goodreads to be read pile for a little bit. And when I realized my library had the audiobook, I got very excited. Couldn't tell you what it's about. Just know that I've been recommended it. It's fantasy and I figured I'd try it. And then I've also got Divine Rivals on there, which is several months wait. So whether this actually happens during the time of my challenge, We'll see. And then I also have Atomic Habits and The Body Keeps the Score, so two nonfiction titles. It's interesting to note that I dip into nonfiction every now and then, and usually with a reading slump, it actually kind of helps me because if I put on a nonfiction book while I'm cleaning the house, it gets me into a reading mood. And then because I've done the cleaning, I've felt productive. So when I actually sit down, my brain is like, actually I can do a science fiction or fantasy story now, like let's go. So that is really helping almost cleanse my mental palate and stop me feeling overwhelmed. And then I can sit down and enjoy my fantasy world where everything is made up and I have the brain space for it. So nonfiction in that way is helping with my slumps. So hopefully those come through between now and the end of July. But can I basically read my whole TBR before the end of July. I will check back in in August and let you know what happens because I usually do my twice a year tag in April and August. And those are like rough check in reading goals updates to see whether I'm on track or whether I should notice something to pull my head in and be on track about. So I'll include an update in that twice a year tag video. But as far as this video goes, let me know if your TBR is huge or if it's small. I very much prefer a smaller TBR, although I would say, you know, under 10 physical books kind of makes me sad honestly I just want to go out and buy books but I haven't been because you know expenses and stuff cost a living all of that so having less is sad I want to buy more books but I'm I'm surviving I'm surviving thank you so much for watching this video I'll come chat to you down below in the comments and I'll see you in my next video good luck with your reading bye